Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to the Dare to Dream podcast. It's great to have you here and excited as always to be on this journey with you. A little bit later, I'm going to be having my guest here, Rachel Fiore, because she offers people a direct, no nonsense plan to liberating transformation. The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award and is right now a finalist for a Coalition of Visionary Resources Award. And we were, fe- we were featured in Welp Magazine for one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. So grateful for all of that recognition and for all of you who follow and who write your comments and are on this journey as well. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. So if you'd like to experience it, do a program or become a facilitator, you can go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I teach entrepreneurs, coaches, and speakers and healers how to write a highly engaging book. And I also take authors' books to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And the third leg of the the, uh, hubability, that's like a new uh, branding for me. I love that. Out of of the mouth of of a mistake comes something perfect. It's actually a visibility hub, but hubability is pretty good too. But the third leg of my visibility hub is showing entrepreneurs how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. And all of these, I've got online programs. And of course, there are live ways to work with me privately and in groups. And I also have a gift for you. So for those who are ready to get out there and have their voice, their message, and their being seen and heard, go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. And it's D-E-B-B-I, D as in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So as promised, the question is, how can we cut through the spiritual bullshit? Well, Rachel Fiore, MSOT CEO of Masters of Self University is here. And she's a mystical therapist, a spiritual leader, psychic healer, and divine mystic. She is the lead professor teaching the Mystical Life Coach Certification Program with a Master of Science in Occupational Therapy, a BA in Business Corporate Communications, a psychic intuitive empath, and as a highly sensitive person, Rachel has spent over 23 years empowering individuals, coaches, and people around the world to heal their lives and relationships at the soul level. And if you'd like to learn more, go to mastersofselfuniversity.com. I welcome Rachel Fiore to Dare to Dream. Great to have you here. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. Pleasure. I am so curious, a highly sensitive person. I totally relate to some of those descriptives in your bio, but it can be a lot of work going through the world pretty raw, right? Knowing but raw. So how was that journey for you? And how did you get where you are where you can call bullshit sometimes? (laughs) Um, I think the key that I have found is to, you always focus on self-healing first. That's it. You focus on self-healing. You focus on elevating yourself and getting rid of your own bullshit that you realize you've been conditioned to be, to show up as in this world that we're conditioned to show up in a lot of ways as complete bullshit that I have to prove myself. I need the followers. You know, I have to get the recognition or the validation. Those are all egoic programs that we are conditioned to be and live in our false selves. I think when we focus on number one priority is my own self healing to unlock spiritual truths, wisdom from the universe, so that I can allow that to flow through me. That's when you can see the bullshit that is really out there and say, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I'd rather be a part of divine truth and nothing less than divine truth. Absolutely. 
you know, I believe that most seekers, that's really what they want. And I also know from being a human, it can be very hard when you're sitting on top of your own stuff. Like, where do you start to unpack that and know, oh, this has to be healed or, oh, this is an identity I'm acting out of. Where do you begin? You begin with, very simply, what am I triggered by throughout my day? Oh, wow. That's (laughs) That's a good one. What am I triggered by throughout my day? Life will show you every single day in your relationships, at work, when you're in traffic. Life will show you every single day what needs to be healed. And if you are triggered by something, you have a little anxiety. That means something is activated inside of you that needs to be seen, Mm. validated, understood, and healed. So it is no longer a part of how you show up in this world. But life shows you your relationships show you every single day, what needs to be healed. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Are you avoiding it? You know, what, what are you do? Are you taking that divine responsibility to say, Oh, I was a little triggered by this, a little triggered by that very triggered by that over there. Wow. And if that's the case, what are you doing to heal yourself? Because the biggest mistake we make is, oh, that over there pisses me off. That's an injustice. This is not okay. I'm going to focus on everything externally. Oh, now you fell into the trap. Now you fell into the trap that you're going to try to change everything outside of yourself instead of first going inside and changing you so you can become a divinely powerful being only from the space inside of your divine power, can you then make a ripple effect and change what you see outside in the world? Mm. Wow. Okay. So what is your approach then? Somebody comes to you and says, okay, Rachel, I heard you being interviewed on Debbie Dashinger show, and you were talking about triggers and oh boy, I have had this pattern over the last couple of years and it's not going away. So what is your no baloney approach? So to speak to helping somebody through that to the other side. Yeah, I've um, when I was guided many years ago to create the programs, the coaching programs that I've created, all of that came from source, from the universe. Here's what you need to do to heal and elevate. Here's why, here's how, and it's step-by-step. Step. So the best part is the things that, um, that I offer, that my coach, my certified coaches offer, it's a step-by-step coaching program for you to see exactly what programs are running, but most importantly, not just, Hey, I see this pattern over and over, say in my relationship, for example, um, and we've been to therapy, we've gone to therapy for years and we can't, we're just stuck in the same place. I teach everybody step-by-step what programs are actually running mental programs, emotional programs, behavioral programs, and your inner child wounds. Those are the four categories that make up our shadow selves. What programs are you running? What gets activated inside of you? And then we teach you step by step to see the root cause of it. Because here's the truth. We are nothing but energy. We are energy. Our thoughts are energy. They're just energetic programs that are running inside of you. That's it. They got activated. There they go doing what they do running their crazy patterns, causing you emotional pain. Emotional programs are just energetic programs that are running. So what we teach is step-by-step first, how to identify them, but then how to go inside of the energy itself and completely transform that energy, meaning that vibrational frequency. It's a very simple process when you learn it step-by-step and you're willing to learn. You go inside of the energy of that program, the fear of abandonment, for example, fear of abandonment. You learn to identify, look at that. When my partner says this, or my partner does that, I get triggered in fear of abandonment, makes me act out in anger, makes me act out. I get sarcastic. So you see sarcasm, anger is there, but what's deeper? Well, the fear of abandonment. You then go inside of the fear of abandonment that's trapped in your body. And you learn how to alchemize it. You learn how to turn, transform the piece of coal into the diamond. Once it's a diamond, you transform that energy into something completely different. It's permanent. It never goes back. But it is an energetic process that you have to learn step by step how to do. Once you do, you're free. You never run that program ever again. It's completely gone. Well, whatever that is, I don't even know what that is. But I'm just saying, as you described it energetically over here, I'm getting puddled. 
I'm just <laughs> like my <laughs> atoms are, yeah, they're just in a puddle. And I know when that happens, the person's legit. So whatever it is you are talking about, that's incredible. I think what's most intriguing to me, of course, is the fact you don't just go in, access it and work with it. It becomes a tool for your healing, but you're saying it's eradicated. It yes. is complete. Yes. To it's take gone. a program that's been running you mostly subconsciously and as a reaction to something yes. not even present, exactly. that is a very big deal. Very big deal and freeing, completely freeing. And the best part about it, so as, as a psychic healer, hmm. as I'm a psychoenergetic healer, I, I see and deal with the energies in people, meaning their programs are just energy programs, they're just frequencies. So my gift, one of my gifts, I can see exactly what is in there, what's in your blind spot, what's been stuck. I can go in and alchemize the energy and it is gone. So that's great. Good for me. I can do it. Anybody who wants it, you can find me on my website. You can get those healings and that's fabulous. But the best part, this is better. <laughs> the best part is in our, what's so important to me and I'm very passionate about is teaching people how to do this for themselves Yeah, because that's more important because mm. then you're not reliant on someone else always for your healing. You say, I can learn how to do this and see my programs and actually transform the energies from the inside out. And anybody can learn how to do it as long as you're willing and you're devoted to learning the process. You're not going to learn it in five minutes. You know, we require three months for you to learn how to do all of this in our programs, but that's why we require three months in our coaching programs so that you can actually learn how to do this for yourself. Yeah. And I love that you bring up shadow work. So I don't want to make an assumption that people know what that means, I will just say as a pre-caveat that if the world's people would all do shadow work, we would not be in most of the positions we are that are causing people so much anxiety and angst because people would become so responsible for cleaning up and knowing my, so I'll, I'll say my experience of doing it and understanding shadow work. I mean, there's a a 12 step saying, which is every time I point a finger at you, I've got three pointing back at myself. And so that's to say that where there's judgment, where there's criticism, where there's something that repeatedly bothers us about someone or people, right? It's usually the same thing. It is actually very much alive in us and we're perpetuating it out into the world, but completely unconscious about it. So the genius creatures we are, we look at other people, that's a terrible thing they do. They're a gossip or they're a cheat or they're yes. whatever, fill in the blank. And so when you do the work to clean that up, oh my gosh, the tentacles that go out into the world that get changed, it's massive. Yeah. I would love to hear your experience. And I'd also love to hear a story about shadow work. So if you could address both, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I, this is my favorite topic because this is everything that we do. This is the most important work. It's the only work that counts. You know, I'll say this first that a lot of people out there will say, you know, just, you know, positive vibes only just be the light. That's not, that's not a light worker. That's an avoider. That's somebody who wants to stay in powerlessness. A light worker is somebody who goes inside of darkness and transforms darkness into light. You can't do that if you don't go into the shadow. That's an alchemist. Yes, that's an alchemist. Exactly. And that's what, that's understanding that, that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I'm here to empower other people to do is to become true alchemists because you can, you can learn that, but you can't do it if you're not willing to see the darkness that you carry inside of yourself. And we all carry it until we heal enough where we no longer carry it. It's just that simple. And it is okay that we carry that darkness. It is not okay that we do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. It's not okay that we pretend like we don't. Because the more we turn our heads and look the other way and say, well, you know, positivity only out there, the more we turn our backs on the fact that evil exists. And that's, we're the ones letting evil and darkness onto the planet. And we're, we look out there and point the finger and blame, right? So going back to our programs and some of the beautiful things that you shared, Debbie, 
is when we point the finger at everybody else. So here's what I teach people. So that person over there might be an asshole. They might be showing up in a really crappy way. <laughs> they might, they, they really might. So we won't deny that because a lot of that exists, right? Very hateful way over there, very sexist way, very racist way. There they are. And yet, what am I carrying inside? Because we claim to want to change the world for the better, and yet we refuse to let go of our judgment of that person over there. I'm no better than that person over there when I am in judgment of that person and where they're at. So my job is to see, oh, look at this. I'm angry at that person. I'm in judgment. I'm actually running a program of superiority. I think I'm superior and they're inferior because I think I'm better than them because I don't do what they do. And here's what's interesting. Here's now where we cut through the spiritual bullshit. When I'm willing to see myself in that way, I actually think I'm better than that person. I'm creating the energy of inequality in the world. Why? I'm running the program of inequality because I think I'm superior in this moment. And that's where we have to wake up and see. So we are mad about inequality in the world. And yet I hate the people who, are, who believe in inequality. Oh, wait a minute. If you hate, you're contributing to inequality. If you're judging them, you think you're superior in that moment because you're in judgment. Judgment always makes the person you're judging inferior to you. Look at the programs you're running now. This right here is true awakening. So when I'm willing to see that in myself, holy crap, I didn't realize I was running inequality programs. I'm out here protesting, and yet I'm hating the people I'm protesting against. That makes me the same as them. True awakening is seeing that, realizing that, and saying, I'm not willing to put that out into the world anymore. We've had enough of this for thousands of years. I'm going to heal myself. I am going to then, it doesn't mean don't protest or don't, you know, stand up against injustice. It means do it from the place of divinity, not from your hate, not from your superiority programs, not from the inequality programs that you didn't even know you ran before now. That's the work. That's the real work. And tell us a story of a time when uh, somebody went through this part of your program and something that had been running their life that was actually shadow work was then revealed to them. How was it healed? What happened after? Yeah. So gosh, there's so many to choose from. Which one shall I choose? <laughs> Juicy one, please. <laughs> I actually, you know what? I'll just share one that just happened today in my, um, I, I certify coaches, my mystical life coach certification program. So I was in class teaching, um, with these amazing, beautiful souls who are becoming certified in this work. And um, one of my students today showed up and just, you know, broke down and crying with, I'm manipulative. I, I have narcissistic, you know, tendencies. I'm treating my husband horribly. And she's just waking up to the programs, the behavioral programs that she's running. Whereas before she couldn't see what she was doing. And she's been doing this work because in my, in the certification program, you have to go through it first and heal first. You don't, you don't work with other people and call yourself a coach if you haven't first healed this stuff and done the shadow work yourself. And that's part of the program. And so going through this, because of that, she's really awakening to a lot of the very scary and ugly programs that she doesn't want to have. And in her beautiful vulnerability, she was able to just call out all of the programs that she's running that a lot of people wouldn't want another soul on the planet to know that was a part of who they are. We all like to wear our masks and put and let everybody think that we're just magical and mystical and wonderful all the time, right? <laughs> so we wear our masks. She took all the masks off and she just showed them to everybody. And it was a beautiful, very vulnerable moment. And there was her biggest shift in, in healing what was really there because she was willing to see it. She was willing to own it. And the beautiful part about that is we were able to go much deeper in the healing where she could see that there was just this wounded little girl that had a massive mother wound. Mom used to be very horrible to her and abusive. And when that then opened up, she was able to go inside and heal that little girl and start to free and empower that little girl to no longer be a broken, powerless little girl who has to show up mean and nasty to keep herself safe. 
Mm-hmm. She doesn't need to be that anymore. So there's your shift into true, authentic transformation and emotional freedom. Wow. And so in your groups, you'll track her going forward and see how she's doing. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe absolutely. a little thank you letter from her husband. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's like, especially in relationships, you know, uh, it's very, very interesting. And I'm um, hard for many people to stay together. You, uh, you yourself, Rachel, grew up in very interesting circumstances. And yet what I find fascinating about you is you took a stance and you said, well, I have options, but I am damn not going to become a victim, which is pretty amazing. So talk about what happened to you growing up and how did you make these really definitive choices that became who you turned into today? Yeah. So it's, um, you know, I grew up with a very, very abusive bipolar out of control stepfather and, you know, just the typical, what you think of abuse, a tremendous amount of psychological, mental, emotional, verbal abuse, sometimes physical um, you know, witnessed it against my mom and my sister, the whole nine and nothing he ever did was good enough. And I just had that, you know, my first shift into true awakening was at 13 when I learned very early on, Oh, I, I just have to be better. So it was a people please. I just have to be better. I have to be, you know, little miss perfectionist. I have to get better grades. I have to do better in my sports. And then he'll tell me I did a good job. So I was trying to get that, you know, validation from this abusive, terrible man, very broken man. And at 13, I realized when I had worked really hard, I got a B on my report card. So of course I'm grounded for that and I'm stupid and I'm all that verbal abuse that came with it. Um, And I worked really hard to pull that grade up to get an A. And when he came home and I was like, there, I'm going to hand him my report card. And I was in my living room, looking up at his face, waiting to see, this is how sad, waiting to see the expression of approval on his face. Like you did it, you did a good job. And instead I saw the face change, which I knew the abuse was coming. So that instant, it was that fight, flight, or freeze. I knew I was going to get it. And, you know, very confusing because I got an A and it was, this is an A minus. It doesn't even count as an A. And there comes the curse words and the yelling. And I literally had an out of body experience. It was like, my soul just left my body. And for a minute, I was like kind of behind and above us slightly just watching. And I had the biggest epiphany. Oh my God, this has nothing to do with me. This is not about me at all. None of this is about Rachel. This is about him, his programs. This is his brokenness. You know, he's, he's projecting all of that onto me, but this is not personal. And it was like a thousand pounds of weight just lifted off of my shoulders. And I, I've never been the same since that moment because it was never again I need to get validation from another human being. Never. It was just, I don't have to do anything I do. All of my success is how hard I work. If I got another B or if I got a hundred percent, it doesn't, that's for me. That's for me. I never again did it. I didn't give a shit what he thought after that. I didn't need the approval. And that was the first real big kickstart to what led me to what I do today. Understanding it's other people's programs. They need to heal why do we take it so personally when someone else is broken? Mm. And you were gifted from the time you were very young? Yeah, always. Was that, that's usually hard for kids mm. because you don't have a place to go talk about it or be that out in public no. with friends? It was really hard. It was really hard. It was very lonely. It was very confusing. I couldn't understand why people couldn't see what I could see. Hmm. or know what I knew, but you know, it's right there. Why can't you just see that? I never understood. And then you just feel weird and alone. And, you know, I I was very popular. I had a lot of friends, but boy, did I feel on the outside, it looked great, but I was very desperately lonely Hmm. on the inside because I could not understand why other people didn't understand. But if you do that, this is going to happen. It was a premonition. I didn't know the word premonition. I would warn people, don't do that because you're really going to get hurt. I mean, I've even predicted, oh, I've started dating this new guy. I really can't wait to see what you think. And I meet him and I'm like, get away. He's going to hurt you. He is really going to hurt you. You need to get away right now. I think you might be safe if you just leave him now. Of course, they ignore and don't listen. They find out he's a little bit of a psycho. 
Mm-hmm. And then when she broke up with him, finally, he showed back up and barged through her door and raped her. Mm. And I had told, you know, it's that kind of stuff that I didn't understand. You don't understand. I see him really physically harming you. Mm -hmm. Like you have to get away now you're in danger. And I could never understand at the time why people just didn't listen. Like it sounds so silly, but I didn't, why aren't you just listening to what I'm telling you to do or not do? (laughs) And I could never understand that they couldn't see that too, because it was so innately a part of who I was. So yeah, it was, it was a hard road. It was very lonely and nobody can relate to you. So it was a lonely, it's been a lonely journey. (laughs) Mm. And now this is what you do and all the people come to you for yeah. the very gift. Isn't that life is so wild in that it way. Is. It's interesting <laughs> to go through the wound, to access that it's your gift. Exactly. And now you're in a relationship, you're married. And I know because I've seen you say very nice things about him. And I think it's also interesting to come from such a dysfunctional place and yet be able to create a relationship that works for you and supports you and is functional. Was that a journey? Oh, yes. Yes. It was an incredible journey. (laughs) Very rough one. And it's, um, you know, in learning what it really means when you're awakening, learning when someone else, they're just running their programs too. And they're in their brokenness and their woundedness and understanding to see people now to not meet my own, my needs. That's part of what I teach, you know, in our relationship coachings. It's like, you have to stop believing all the crap out there that says your partner should meet your needs. No, they shouldn't. You're not a child. You learn to meet your own needs and then you can authentically and with unconditional love, see and meet your partner for where they are. But it was, it was rough for me because I'm so incredibly sensitive to do the psychic healings and the things that I do for people, it is a tremendous amount on the, on the physical body. A lot of people don't understand that it, it takes a lot and you have to really love yourself in order to care for yourself and do what you need to do to recover and nurture and have balance and all of that. Um, I'm very blessed with my life partner now because the more I do this work for people and the more demanding it can be at times, he just picks up the other the other areas. He just takes over the cooking and the grocery shopping and the this and the that, because he's like, you need to recover. You have a lot of clients or you have, it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful balance, but boy, did I go through some horrific men (laughs) running horrific programs to learn how to stand into my power to say, no, this is what I need to function for my soul mission. And it is okay if you don't want to meet me there, but we can't be together then. So I had to learn the hard way, like a lot of people, how to stand in my power, set the boundaries, say no, but do it with love, not with judgment. And that's the trick. Hmm. And and is that what you mean? Um, I know one of the things you talk about is rescuing relationships from their own demise. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sage advice about that? Yeah. A lot of times we think when things are rough in a relationship or you're triggering each other, you're not getting along. Oh, that I was wrong you know, she's really not the one, he's really not the one, we should get divorced, or we should, we should break up. And a lot of times that is just not the case. It it's not, it's surprising if you just are willing to do the deep work, how much love and compassion you can create in that relationship and power, just divine power. And, and the beauty of it too, is if you're willing to do the real work, Um, there are some relationships that they really are meant to then go separate ways, but the difference is you heal first and you actually separate with love. You separate with more love than you ever had and you separate with support and you wish nothing but the best for that person from a really loving, loving place. And you separate on such beautiful terms. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will come like, Hey, we need some help. We're going to get a divorce you know, but we don't want to hate each other. Can we have help going through it? And I help people actually separate in some of my programs. And the funny thing is they come in with the intention of getting a divorce and they end up staying together and being more madly in love than ever before. But as part of that, because Rachel, you can see 
um, I don't know what else to call it, but a matrix of sorts that you can literally see two people and their karma and their connections. Yes. You no, know, no, you guys are not done. Yes. This is, this relationship is truly meant to be, or you can see, no, this was what it was for the time and you're ready to move on. You can yes. see all that. I can see all that. Hmm. Yeah. I can see all that. I can see the possibilities and the other things. And I've seen another, um, just to, to add to that a little bit, I've also seen in certain people, you better heal this right now because I see the next one coming mm. and it's going to be uglier than this one because oh. you're not learning your lessons. And I've seen it play out exactly like that. Exactly like that. Like three, four years from now, you are so going to regret if you go down this path, do the work, heal it now. And then you know, there's never judgment, never, ever, ever am I in judgment with people that this is your life experience. You do whatever you need or want to learn from it is up to you. But I've also seen that where, no, they just continued down the same path. They didn't want to listen to the guidance and that's okay. That's absolutely fine. But then three, four years later, they're, they're in a mess because they're like, I shouldn't have gotten remarried. I shouldn't have gone. I shouldn't have done any of the things that I did. I see it now. But that's also what that soul needed to get to that place. Mm -hmm. They weren't ready to listen. They needed, they weren't ready to take the easy way of awakening. They needed to take the hard way. And that's okay too. That's okay too. I don't wish that on anybody, but I mean, we do have free will choice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who is the gal who does these TikTok videos of you? Do you know what I'm talking about? That I'm researching you and this, I'm not even on no, I don't know her name. Um, she's an Asian gal and she does. It's hilarious. And you're there disseminating all this wisdom and her little being pops in like, you know, it does something and pops back out. Do you know her? Oh, yes, absolutely. She's amazing. So Ellie Lee, hello. I'm going to give a shout out to her. Ellie Lee is my um, social media liaison at oh. Masters of Self University. Okay. And she also is um, currently getting certified as a mystical life coach at Masters of Self University. And she is one of the most incredible, amazing beings on the planet. So of course, I think everybody should go on Instagram and TikTok and follow Ellie Lee because she's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you know her because otherwise, well, it's amazing promotion. <laughs> the way she does it, it's very entertaining. I have to, I have to admit, I watched a couple of them. And so we're talking about, you know, pain sucks, basically hard times suck. Nobody really wants that in their life. Although, hello, we are all going to go through it. Yeah. And even when we have it all together and we've done all the work, it's still going to come. That still yes. amazes me to this day. Yes. It's, it's like laundry. Come. I've done it. Why does, <laughs> why do I have to do it again this week? Uh, <laughs> I don't follow. So when someone is given the path, here is the fire of a difficult time. And they say, I choose to heal. I'm a seeker. I'm not going to sit on this. And I know that the soul's positive evolution actually comes when I walk through the fire, yes. not around it. So suffering, pain, do all of these things have the same components to them or are they actually independent pieces? They do not have the same components. Pain and suffering are two completely different things. Pain often leads to suffering, but suffering is just a chronic unhealed pain. Say that again. All, suffering is just chronic, unhealed pain. Okay. That's it. So pain is always going to be a part of our, our lives. The human experience, your soul having this human experience, you will have pain in your life. That's part of the human experience. And my, my go-to for that example is the person you love the most. I don't care if it's a child, if it's a partner, who do you love the most? They died tomorrow. You're not going to then be shouting out positive vibes only then, are you? No, you're going to be in your pain because that's painful, right? So that is an example of having pain. You go through something very painful, loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. However, suffering is the grief lasts for 10, 12, 20, 30 years, and you're still going to counseling. Why? Because you're not actually healing the pain. Mm -hmm. Now you're in suffering. So 
pain doesn't have to turn into suffering. How does it not turn into suffering? We learn to love ourselves through our pain. How much nurturing and love do we give to our pain when we have it versus coping, avoiding, you know, using coping strategies, pretending like, oh, but somebody has it so much worse than me. Uh -uh, We don't know how to honor our pain. Going into our pain and honoring our pain when it's there is loving it while it's there. And then it never sticks around. It's only ever temporary. Pain is only temporary. Here's an interesting question. I was recently told, it's not quite pain, but I was recently told somebody was channeling for me and I trust the source very much. And they were basically saying, you know, you expend a lot of energy. We see how much you work. And I've been told this before and I know it, it's not a huge surprise, but they, I'm going through a particular, hopefully the upswing side of healing right now on a couple of levels. And they were saying, we want you to be still, nature, quiet. And I hear these words, and of course I comprehend these words, but I actually have no idea on some level, what does that mean to be still? And I don't know if you know, but to what does that mean that I just sit there and I look out a window? Do I go out in the backyard in the patio and just breathe? Do I, like, it's actually such a strange anomaly, this idea of, stillness. I mean, I could take yeah. something and get there. I could just right. dive in. I could, you know, facilitate, right. but to just be me and have that stillness that I can feel what they're talking about. It feels quite outside of me. Right, right, right. Yes. Beautiful. So where here's where I start. It's learning when I try to be quote unquote still, whether I really know what that means or not, noticing what programs are running when I'm trying to be still. So what does that mean? You start with mental programs where your mind is going to start to tell you something right now, because the mind is never quiet. The mind is like never still, right? So the first part of it is what is my mind saying about this right now? And you just pay attention because our minds are batshit crazy, crazy. Our mental programs are so crazy But if we stop and really pay attention for a little bit at a time and say, oh my God, my mind is saying this right now, that is just, that's crazy. And you write down, what are your mental programs in this moment? Mm -hmm. And then the next part of it is I teach people how to drop in and connect to their heart space. And what does it mean to connect? I take you through a process, you drop into your heart and it's literally your heart chakra. Not that anybody has to call it that doesn't matter. You just go to your heart center, center of your chest and you start to breathe. And one exercise for some people, it helps to imagine this golden white spark that is in the center of their chest and focus on that spark and just start to grow that light throughout your chest. And as you do that, you feel it. Mm -hmm. you can feel what that feels like. So to the best of your ability, what are you starting to feel in your chest as you grow that light? Yeah, I can tell you, I didn't feel it in my mental uh, monkey monkey thoughts. My mental thoughts are like, this is bullshit. I am bored. What can I should be doing something? I have so much to do. And as soon as you drop me into this golden heart space light. This is a trip. Yeah. Like, unbelievable. That was so simple. Total yeah. presence. There you Total go. Ease. And there you go. Nothing else really. There you go. That's it. It's right there. And then what will happen is your mind will start to take over. Those are the mental programs kicking back. And when the mind takes over, you say, oh, look at you join in the party. Aren't you cute? Uninvited. That's okay. We welcome all guests here. <laughs> and you breathe and you drop back in and you connect to the heart and you just breathe and you literally focus on feeling the physical sensations of that energy because that right there is the key. And you'll feel it as people can describe it as warm or gentle or 
calming. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other different words. Everybody's a little different. But whatever that feels like for you, it's okay. Let me breathe. And now let me make that more powerful. Just expand. And then you're growing it throughout your entire body. And there you're connected to your heart center. That's it. That's stillness. That's presence. That's how simple it is. And then my mind says, so what do I do? Do I stay here for five or 15 minutes like this? If it feels good to you, you can. But the real, the next step to this would be, oh, look, I'm triggered by something. I'm a little agitated. I'm a little irritated. One of my programs is running. Oh, let me stop and drop into my heart, grow my light, grow my heart energy for a moment. And then I say, oh, look at this program of judgment came up. I'm totally judging that person. Now I'm going to connect to my heart and I'm going to bring my heart energy to the judgment. And I'm going to embrace the judgment that I feel that I am, that I'm pointing my finger at that person. I'm going to drop in. I'm going to grow the energy of my heart centeredness. And I'm going to embrace my own judgment. And when you bring heart centeredness to your program of judgment or, you know, shame or fear, whatever program got a little bit triggered, anxiety, I drop and connect, grow. I bring my heart centeredness. That's your divinity. I bring that to the anxiety. I bring that to the fear or whatever might have been triggered. And it has no choice but to start to dissolve. There's alchemy right there happening. Yeah, that's gold. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. One of the driving forces, I want to do this because I have a feeling a lot of people relate to this and I want to really be able to give the listeners something here. So one of the driving forces for me is, I guess I, I, I know you teach this, so it, it stuck out to me creating a life I don't know if it's fully force, but I know how to roll up my sleeves and, you know, right. make something happen. Right. And you talk about creating our life from power. Yes. And I understand your intention. Like there, you mean potency, right? Not power over, but a potency. Right. So that's what fuels me often and probably too many projects all the time and a lot of creativity. So how does one funnel away from a force they may be used to mm. using and, and instead go into a flow and a, a, a potency that must be also universally driven somehow. It's a hundred percent universally driven. That's what, that's what it means to be in power versus force mm. force. We want to make it happen. I want this. I don't have it yet. I need to have it happen. And that's forcing, forcing, forcing. And that forcing is you may achieve it. You may not. You may get sick while you achieve it. You might run yourself so ragged. You might, you know, separate in your relationship because your partner can't handle it, whatever. That's coming from force. When you're coming from power, that is the universe working through you. You're the vessel for the universe, for source, for your higher self to work through. You become the vessel for the universe to move through and create through. Okay. That's the shift to get there. It's taking it, you know, in bite-sized pieces, step-by-step -step learning that, well, if I'm in wanting, I'm in woundedness. If I'm in wanting, I'm in wounding. So what do I want? What do I want? A lot of people teach like, what do you want? What do you want? It's like, Oh, careful. It doesn't mean don't get clear. Doesn't mean don't get clear on things you want to create. You want a successful business or you want to create this or that. It doesn't mean don't get clear. But when you are in wanting, you're coming from, I can't have it. I don't have it. What programs are running? If you're in wanting of something, I'm going to force it to, I got to make it happen. That means you're in a program of powerlessness. Number one, number two, you're running a program of lack of trust, lack of trust in the universe. You're not connected to the universe when we're doing that. It's, this is beautiful. What do you want to create through me is the real question. What do you want to create through me? And what the universe will do is say, oh, there you are. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you to show up and ask, what do you want to create through me? And then what the universe will do, it'll put all these little tests to show you 
the programs, the woundedness, the unhealed stuff you have to clear that out of the way. Well, that has to be cleared out of the way before the universe can really use you efficiently as a vessel, right? So we have all our blocks and our unhealed stuff in the way and we're like, but I want this. Oh, but you're too broken to handle it. Hmm. Isn't that funny? We don't realize a lot of times we're too unhealed and broken to handle the very thing we want. We're not powerful yet enough to handle it, which is why we have our midlife crises and we get divorced and we, you know, we fall apart and we have chronic fatigue and all that nonsense that we get instead of, oh, divine timing. Isn't that per it's called divine for a reason, <laughs> divine timing for a reason, <laughs> right? So it's, what do you want to create through me? And then who do I need to become in order to deliver that thing? Who do I need to become? So if I have to become really powerful in myself and heal myself to a certain level, and that means that I can then help the world, why would I not do that? And as soon as I do that, the universe says, oh, you're ready. Here we go. And boom, everything just floods in. It just comes to you. It comes to you. The universe will tell you what it wants from you. Are you willing? Are you willing to be that? Or you want to still function from the little ego that says, I want something different? Yeah. And, you know, it's really interesting listening to you because it occurs to me that it comes full circle. In order to create our life from power, we need to be still. Yes. <laughs> we need to have that emptiness yes. and that no thought, no thing. Yes. For the universe to show up and even guide us or communicate. You got it. Magnificent. That is exactly it. And the funny thing is when you just trust and listen, okay, here's my guidance telling me to do this or to create that or to let go of that over there. And what do we do? We go right to our minds. But why, why? I need my checklist. I need my pros and cons. I need to understand everything. I don't have to understand everything. I do not understand certain things when my guidance comes through. I just say, really, I might be a little, I might be a little pissed off that you want me to do that right now. <laughs> oh, give us an example. What, what, when did you get a download like that? You're like, you are What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, my, my mystical life coach certification program. I was like, okay, like in around six months, sometime in the next year, I'm going to start to create that. It is an incredible amount of work. I knew the amount of work that had to go into that. So in my mind, I had it planned out. This is what I was going to do. And when I was going to start it, I was going to take on three coaches. This is incredibly deep work, powerful work. I was going to train and certify three coaches. And once I had three coaches, I would then decide, okay, now we're going to put this out to the world. Oh, no. Mm -mm. It came crashing through, create this right now. And I was like, what now? And I was like, and I'm looking at my calendar and they're like, no, you don't understand. Stop what you're doing. Cause I'm looking at the weeks to come, the months to come, stop what you're doing. Stop creating the program. I was recording a digital court, stop. And it was, you do this instead, it's time. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> what? I created it. And then I had in my mind, I was going to certify three, just three. I got the first three in my first class. Everything was perfect. 29, 30 more, 27 more came. I think it was 27. I think I had 30, I guess. And it was, they just all flooded in so fast. None of it was, I had not planned anything that way. And I just laughed. I'm like, oh, this is what you want me to do. Okay. I get it. <laughs> That's why you wanted to create this early instead of a year from now. Got it. I just listened. If I'm told to stop what I'm doing and start creating that instead, I just listen. Huh. And never is there a, oh shit, I shouldn't have listened to the universe. Never, never. It's, thank goodness I know better and I know to listen to the universe. Mm. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> so I guess it worked out. You had 27 more people show up and maybe everything wasn't as perfect or in place as you wanted, but they got what they needed and the classes still oh, exist. It, oh, it's amazing. And it's, and more, I mean, I'm almost filled up for January, 2023 class at this point. Yeah. I mean, they're just, it was created, like I said, divine timing doesn't come from us. You know, I had a whole another year. I was going to wait to do it. And the universe said that you stop what you're doing and do it right now. Yeah. Create it now. They're coming. Okay. 
So I will. <laughs> it's amazing. I had that happen with my second book. I had written a book. I mean, I, I'm sure it was almost 80% complete. And I literally got this download. That's not the book. I'm like, what? Do you know what it takes to write a book? No, here's what we're going to do. And I'm like, oh. And I thank God I just rolled with it. I mean, it became, I'm Good so proud you. of the second book. Yeah. I actually never published the other one. It's somewhere on my hard drive. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It was what was meant to be birthed. I was, yes. just, I was just the doula hanging out and waiting for the universe to give me my marching orders. You know, what people needed, I guess, to read at that time. That is beautiful. I, you know, I'll share one more story. Cause that that's, I love that. I actually channeled a book. Um, my, my dog died, mm -hmm. my sole companion, just my, my baby, he died. And the very next morning, as I'm crying hysterically after having to put him to sleep and it was go get your laptop. And I was like, oh, F you, you are crazy. I'm crying. There's snot coming out. <laughs> Not okay. Like this is me nurturing and loving my grief. And I got such a hard push, get your laptop. And that's when the universal ways of oneness just channeled through one at a time, 20 universal ways of oneness. And it's one of the things I'm here to teach the world. And it came through the not even 24 hours after my Mason died. And I was crying all over. I'm like, I'm going to have to buy a new laptop. This is going <laughs> to short circuit. I don't know how you expect me to do this. <laughs> and it's just now's the time. Understand what his life with you and his death really meant. Mm. And it just, all the universal ways of oneness flowed through. And that's when I channeled that book. Oh, that's beautiful. That's such a great story. I got goosebumps listening to that. God bless dogs. I know. <laughs> One of the things you talk about, Rachel, and thank you for those stories so much, and those insights. You talk about soul contract and I, I love stuff like that, you know, and I've read books where people like channel and they can somehow go to some level. And of course it's all right here anyway, but I'll call it a level to distinguish it. And they actually have a, a conversation with your oversoul and all the people who agreed to be playing these crazy parts in your life and so forth. So we have free will and choice. We all know that. But then there's also this thing called a soul contract. So yeah. how does that come into play in somebody's life? And how do you know? How do we know? Oh, no, this is me. I get to choose or no, this is kind of going down because that's why I'm here. That's what yeah. I have to do. Yeah, that's I'd love this too. I love this topic as well. I'm happy that you brought it up. So um, our soul contracts are there in order to, of course, a lot of people know work out karma, but it's, it goes even deeper than that. It's what is this soul in front of you meant to offer to you? And we don't think about that a lot of times when we have a, a terrible experience or, um, you know, abuse is there, for example. So um, I'll go back to the story I already shared and give you an example in, in my own personal life. It's you know, when my father died when I was very young and the stepdad that came in, I mean, he was terrible. He was really abusive. He was a horrible person. And um, all of the abuse that I got from him, I remember going off to college saying, there's no way I'm not effed up from this. There's no way. Like you can't go through this and not be effed up. And that just made a vow to myself. I'm going to heal myself from this, see where I'm messed up and I'm going to heal that. And in that heal, in the healing process of making that vow to myself, um, I just saw that I was so sensitive, so psychic, all the gifts I have, I was a very gentle soul mm -hmm. and being with somebody who was so harsh with somebody who's so sensitive. Yes. I had to learn to stand in my power and use my voice, even when I was afraid, even when threatened, even when triggered into, you know, fear or fight, flight, or freeze, because your survival is threatened. Like you have to learn how to stand in your power. And that is even more important for people who are very, very sensitive for us empaths and, you know, HSPs. And we have to learn something from that. So even though that experience, I wouldn't wish that on, on anybody, you know, but at the same time, 
I knew that it was meant for me. It didn't happen to me. It happened for me. So my divine responsibility with that soul contract, with that man coming into my life is you were here for me. You know, when I'm in my woundedness, I might not be able to see why, but that's the number one job of going in and healing yourself first and foremost, always. If I heal from this, I can learn from this. What was meant for me? And I was meant to see that as terrible as he was to me, as abusive as he was to us, he was running programs. What are programs? Mental, emotional, behavioral, inner child wounds. What are those? Pro that led me to the work that I do and empower people with and free people with and heal people with today. That was for me. That didn't happen to me. That mm. was a gift. It was a horrific one, but inside of every gift, there is a lesson. Inside of every human experience, there's a lesson to be learned. And if you learn that lesson, you become the gift yourself to then offer that to other people. So no more victim consciousness. Our soul contracts are there. They are there for you, even if they're really scary or terrible or unpleasant experiences. They're still for you. When you have these epiphanies, and you're recognizing, oh, okay, this was actually meant to be. I had to go through that. I made some great choices to heal. And because I did the work, I come out the other side and I have what it takes now to help people in this regard. So thank you, wouldn't wanna do that again, but thanks for the lesson. As you're, you're out and even today, I don't know if your stepfather is still alive when he was and you had come to the other side of this experience. What was your relationship then like with him, if any? I haven't had one since I was a teenager. I haven't had one, but I can tell you energetically, I moved through, there's no such thing as unforgiveness or resentment or hate or anything like that. So the relationship is a beautiful one in the sense that I don't carry any negativity with inside of myself. And that is the only relationship that ever really matters is the one you have with yourself, because the relationship you have with yourself is the relationship you offer to everybody else in the world, whether you realize it or not. Oh, say more about that. I like that. Yeah. So it's, we often, when we're in relationships, it can be friendships or romantic. It doesn't matter. It's whatever relationship I have with myself. If I love and nurture myself through my grief, for example, Okay. Um, I gave an example a few minutes ago, my dog dies crying. I'm in grief. If I don't know how to love and nurture myself through that, I don't have the ability to love and nurture someone else through their grief. I can't be to someone else what I haven't first become for myself. There's your true definition of what self-love is, is that I can offer you maybe selflessness, but not be a doormat. How can I do that? Well, because I learned what the true power of love is. And love is an aspect of oneness, which means it doesn't exclude me. It doesn't exclude anyone from the equation. So if I love myself, I can love you. If I can love you, I can love all because I love myself. You see, so what I can offer someone else is because I offer that to me. So where are you headed? What, what is next for you? I'm sure you've been through some changes over the last couple of years. <laughs> Uh, caused by the pandemic and all the interesting things going on in the world. What do you next dare to dream, Rachel? What are your future dreams and goals? So we have so many things on the pipeline, coming down the pipeline at Masters of Self University. There's a special being filmed for me in August. There is, um, we're creating our first annual Masters of Self University Expo it will happen on October, 2023. We've just released our podcast. There are so many things. I have amazing certified mystical life coaches that are seeing clients for our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. I mean, it is endless. I could go on and on. There's May 21st is a live psychic healing session that I have. It's a virtual one for now, um, but there's a live psychic healing session on May 21st. If anybody wants to sign up and show up for that, I heal everybody that shows up. And where is um, that? Where do they go? They can go to mastersofselfuniversity.com and, and go under events and, and sign up. You can get your ticket. Um, there are so many things and they keep being created and handed to me. And it's just to help all of you who are ready to be helped. So 
I am the servant here for the universe. And that always guides me to, to create and be what I'm meant to be for everybody else. Do you have a ritual? Do you have something that you do daily that keeps you grounded and healthy? Um, one of the things that I make sure I do, uh, I work out very hard five days a week. I also, what balance. does that mean? You can't just <laughs> work out hard. What are you doing? <laughs> um, oh my goodness. I do a lot of circuit training, lift weights, and I do a lot of inverted training, a lot of upside down handstand oh, kind of crazy stuff cool. that helps keep my body for me in balance. Um, so I do that and I balance the working out and the rest with, I work usually seven days a week, but it's around when I need to rest, when I need to go to the gym, when I need to create the balance. So I just, I do that. That is the main goal. And I stay very hydrated, <laughs> very hydrated, Nice. <laughs> water only, no alcohol, that kind of thing. Hmm. Okay, hey, kudos. What uh, what would you like to tell the listeners here at the end? Is there anything we didn't cover or places where they can find you and follow you? Um, sure. Uh, you can you can follow me on Instagram. Go to mastersofselfuniversity.com because that's our website and you can check out all of our coaches and me. Um, Rachel underscore Fiore on Instagram. You can follow me there and on TikTok. I'm kind of everywhere. Um, but I think the, the most beautiful thing that we've launched just last week was our Masters of Self University podcast. So you can go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts or the website and just check us out and let us help you if, you're, if you want help. And if you just want to browse, that's okay too. We embrace everybody. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for the work you do and for sharing all of that with us and all of what's possible if we do the work. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, Debbie. I end today's show with this quote from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I am experienced enough to do this. I am knowledgeable enough to do this. I am prepared enough to do this. I am mature enough to do this. I am brave enough to do this. Welcome to life. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Thank you for your comments. I read all of them. And next week on the show, I am featuring once again, Dr. Stephen Greer. He will be here on Dare to Dream to talk about all things UFO and what is galactically new. If you are listening to us on podcast and you'd like to see myself, and my amazing guest, I suggest you do. The animated version is awesome. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. And you can start by using the presence exercise Rachel gave us and some of the check-in shadow work if you should be triggered.